Hey guys, what's going on? So, we're in the car and we're down here at Tractor Supply, obviously. I had to come down and get a few supplies, as a matter of fact, from Tractor Supply. I get some of my bird seed here and some other stuff. Some paint and things like that. I've been having to buy a lot of different supplies for this car thing I've been doing with it at Plymouth. So, <clears throat> You see we got lovely weather. It's 52 degrees and it's gonna go down about 26 tonight. The temperature's just gonna go off a cliff. Like it always does. We have a cold front or something move through. Intrigue. Boy, that was one of Oldsmobile's high water marks in cars, wasn't it? We're gonna navigate our way back through town. We're down here in Athens. This is this is the nearest town to me that has any kind of stuff that I use in it. So I come down here most of the time. This is in Alabama, although I live in Tennessee, as you probably most of you know now. But I only live I only live about a mile over the state line up there. And if I had my brothers, I would rather not ever have to come to Alabama for anything, especially spend my tax dollars down here, but the tax rate in Tennessee is higher than it is in Alabama, so if I go downtown to a business that's on the Alabama side of the state line, then I get about a percent and a half tax break, which really to me is inconsequential. But. So, uh, I thought I would just ramble about a few things on this video. I've been out of town a lot and I haven't made a lot of videos and it's just the way that is it's this time of the year unfortunately I've said that several times but, uh, but I've been doing some thinking about my YouTube channel and you may remember about two years ago two or three years ago I guess it was I kind of got on this bandwagon about I thought well I'm going to kind of go by the rules with YouTube as far as like how to do videos and when to post them and what to what to post and hey there we go it's my car all that crap so I got on that bandwagon and was doing that and then it just kind of got to the point that I felt like that that was not necessarily a mistake, but it just that it wasn't really suited to what I like to do on my videos and on my channel. So we're going to roll back on that. I want to show you something real quick. A little place in there called, if you look there beside Goodwill, called Dubs Burgers. I've never been into Dubs Burgers. I don't know anything about it except I know what they sell. And they sell these things that are called Slug Burgers. If you're ever blessed enough to live in the northwest north central Alabama area or northeastern Mississippi then you'll be familiar with slug burgers which I don't know exactly what they are except to me they're most one of the most disgusting excuses for a hamburger that there is they have like flour in them and stuff like that and again there's the Hill Valley Courthouse you may remember from a previous video See, so anyway, these things are disgusting. I never eat them. I've eaten one in my life, and I swore that I'd never have another one. So be real careful. If somebody offers you to take you somewhere down here, have a slug burger, just don't do it. Don't do it. And uh, So they're almost like a deep-fried hamburger. I think that's the closest analogy I can make to that. They're awful. Ugh. But anyway, back to my main topic I got to the point I, just, I decided that I want to roll back this thing about the video you know I went through this I didn't go through the boot camp as YouTube calls it but I went through a lot of the recommendations about you know if you want to have a successful YouTube channel then you need to engage your audience and you need to post videos on a set time frame a set schedule and you need to interact and you need to do this and blah 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 and that's fine that's fine if my channel was like you know these other guys that have grown to you know 
60,000 views per video, but it ain't happened and I just don't have the resources to make that happen because let me tell you something about YouTube. YouTube is, YouTube is about, I would say YouTube these days is about 40% educational videos, like some sort of process to inform people how to do something and about 60% just entertainment. And so, That's all well and good. I, I don't, I don't want to position my channel at this late date as to be any kind of entertainment. You know, I have people come on my channel to this day, and they'll, they'll make a nasty comment to, on a video, and they'll say, "Well, he, this video would be more, in, more entertaining if, if it was less talking and whatever." So I just immediately chunk those comments. I just wipe them off. I don't even. I don't even leave them up there because it makes no difference to me. I'm not here to entertain people. It's nice if I do, but my sole uh, objective is to help educate people. That's what I like to do. That's what I like to do. You know, I like to be entertained, but so that's that. So, you know, I'm, I'm not worried, I guess, is to say that I'm not going to be worried about whether I'm going to be putting videos up too often or too far apart or too lengthy or too short or any of that crap anymore. Because I don't care because I just want to do what I want to do with it and hope that other people get something out of it you know I kind of relate to that is it, it's also shocked me man how that people can be so successful on their YouTube channels and they don't do any actual work you know they just they just talk about things, you know. You, somebody's asked about Uncle Tony's garage, because Uncle Tony's a hardcore Mopar guy, and he's. If you don't know who Uncle Tony is, I've said this before, but that's his name's Tony DeFeo, and he was way back in the day when people actually read magazines. He was uh, a contributing. I don't know if they called him a contributing editor or whatever to one of the one or more of these car magazines which one of them was Mustangs and the other one was Mopar so that's his background and you know back in the day I used to read a lot of those magazines till I started realizing that a lot of these a lot of these car magazines they write these articles and they're thinly disguised product placement pieces is what they are so when you see Somebody says an article that says, well, you know, we're going to show you how to put a stroker kit in a 302 Ford Windsor engine. You can be certain that they're also going to plug all of the products used in that. So anyway, but so, you know, I never did really take any of that stuff seriously. And that, but that was what he did. And after he got out of that, he went into s s just kind of. Well, I don't know what he did. He, he sold parts and stuff like this for all time. And then, you know, he's a, he's a good guy, I guess. I don't know him personally. I certainly don't begrudge him for being successful. But, you know, I've, I've went on his channel a few times and just kind of looked through some of his videos. And, uh, you know, I just get the same, same kind of feeling about that. It's like, you know, he, he's talking a whole lot. He ain't doing much work. He's not doing much to stuff that, because that's what people do. See, they... They, they talk and they don't work. They don't show you actually doing something. They, they, they get you hooked in there to watch their videos without having to go to a lot of effort to make the videos. So that's fine, but I don't, you know, so, so I, I don't watch his channel. I don't subscribe to it. It's just, you know, there's not, there's not a whole lot there that I need to learn from, from, from that situation. But, and you got the Scotty Kilmers who's, who's totally useless. You know, that's just pure entertainment there. But if you want to hear some old guy scream and yell and talk about all this bullshit, then that's fine. Go watch him. But, uh, but you know, the thing about, like, Musty, <clears throat> you know, Musty One, I love his channel because he's, he's actually, he's been very successful, and he's he has went straight down the road about, he's went straight down the road about, how to do videos you know he does the schedule he does the length he does the graphics and he does all that but at least he shows us things he he, he shows work being done so 
the same with old Cold War Motors. You know, I don't subscribe to Cold War Motors because I have a moral thing about that. You know, they do a lot of drug use on that channel, and call it for what it is. I know he doesn't like people to say that. People who smoke pot, they don't like being lumped in with that. But that's a drug use. It's drug use. And I really, really, really don't like people like me that are hardcore about it and point that out and don't like it. They think that they should convince everybody to smoke dope. It's not, it's not gonna happen. This yard up here. That's not even the best one. But so but he does a lot of work and he shows people what he does and so that's good. But the rest of these guys, I don't know if they consider themselves just influencers or what, but so anyway, I decided that I was going to abandon, to get back to that point, I was going to abandon this structured idea because it ain't working. I don't like it. It's not working. And, you know, you guys don't get to, you know, when, it's, when people do impersonal videos, then, you know, the viewers, they really don't connect with the, the person. You know, they make a lot of comments, but they don't know much, much about the people channel owner or what they're about what they like what they don't like so this you know I think when you structure it too much it takes some god body it takes some of the personal out personal uh, uh, part of it out you know it's like some of my subscriptions that I'm subscribed to these people they got channel names I can't I don't even know what what it means, what their channel name means. I don't know who they are, I don't know what their name is, like their first name. So, anyway, we're going to roll that back, so I'm going to be posting videos about whatever, and maybe at random times, and I'm going to be necessary on the weekends or anything, be whenever I want to. So, hope you enjoy that, and I'm just going to give you a warning now. You know, if I, if I talk about something that you don't agree with, that's fine, that's the way it is, but don't be nasty about it nasty about it or you leave some sort of insulting comment I'm just going to scrub you off of it you're not going to be there anymore so be be civil about it you don't have to agree with me but don't be a shithead about it because I don't deal with shitheads anymore so we're rolling back up this this is not this was always just a country road right here country roads take me home but the interstate's right over there and uh slightly interesting thing about this is that this road we're coming up on right here, this parallel little road here, this used to actually be US 31 and this was the southbound right now starts what used to be the southbound lane of US 31 when it was built as a four lane back in the 60s. Check this one out. So we're going back up part of the old US 31. So what they did, I guess, when they built the interstate is they probably just built it and then opened it up totally. I don't remember. I wasn't here then. I wasn't even born then, actually. So uh, I'm showing you these yards. This is one of these things that I've been, you know, I've got this other channel, this Who Said Tyler's Vlog, and I'm going to just let that thing kind of wither because I'm just going to put up what I want to here and uh, not do anything with that channel because I don't really care for having to do two channels. It's a lot of work. It's, a, it's, it's enough work doing one channel. So I can't hack two of them. So I'm not going to do that anymore. So, so I'm going to get back into doing some of the things that I like to do on my videos which is some talking, some complaining, hopefully a lot of lot, a lot of work, a lot of education. And so that's what's gonna happen. So I'm showing you these yards. Let me give you a little background. We're in far north Alabama. And the rural rural areas of Alabama like this, we don't have any kind of zoning out here. This is basically a free for all. So if you have some, if you live out here, one of these folks, and you have a bad neighbor who like these guys we just showed you back there or like that, something like that sitting there, there's nothing you can do about it. 
there's not a damn thing you can do about it because there's no zoning. So there's no code enforcement person to call to come out and give these owners of this shit a summons or anything. They tried that, and the people that were that like to do that, they like to crap their yards up and have junk out there and just be a nasty person, they just cried foul so bad, they thought it was so unfair that they could have to be forced to clean up this junk. And so somehow or another, you tell me how, I don't know how, but somehow or another, they managed to repeal this in Alabama. And so now, like I said, we're right back where we were, or they are, I don't, I don't live here anymore, but right back where we started with. So all this stuff, you know, this guy's running the business, nothing wrong with that. Let me show you the coup de gras up here on one of them. But if you got somebody like got water standing and there's mosquitoes and snakes and their stuff's overgrown, there's nothing you can do about it. Not a thing. You have to sit there and look at it every day. The city has zones, but not the not the rural. Not a thing. You just have to deal with it. So if you ever decide, if for some strange reason you decide you want to live down here, keep that in mind because things can go downhill very quickly. And you know people down here, I don't know what it is, it's probably this way across the country, but at least it's evident down here. People down here are the world's worst, it seems, at just hanging on to junk, stuff that's not worth anything. You'll see yards that got cars in them that are broke broken and have been broken for years and people what people down here do is they don't have enough money to they don't have enough money to go buy a car for cash so they go buy them on payment such as the way that poor people buy stuff and then there's one right there and then they drive them and don't take care of them until they break finally and then they don't have enough money to go fix it all they got money for is payments. That's the that's the way they do it down here, and probably everywhere. It's payments. If we can get it on payments, we can have it. But so anyway, they, one car breaks. Well, they do. They don't fix it. They don't have money to fix it. So they push it out in the yard, and it's a one day. Well, we're gonna fix it one day. Yeah, it's a good car. It just needs it just needs a motor and an engine and a rear end and four tires and brakes and battery and starter and a windshield and a bumper. But it's a good car. We're gonna fix it one day. You ain't gonna do that. You're not gonna do it. It's a lie. But uh, so they do that and they go buy another one. Make all the payments. By the time they get the payments made, it breaks. So what do they do? They well, push it out in the yard with all the other ones. So they have a yard full of junk cars and they have no money to fix any of it. And I've lived, you know, there might be somebody who wants to say, well, you're, you sure are cynical. Hey, I've lived with these people my entire 48 years. I know how they are. This is what they do. Uncle Phil, my buddy, Uncle Phil, he says, you know, he hangs on to junk. His motorcycle, he had a nice motorcycle, is no good leech of a roommate that he's known forever who came down from Michigan with him, tore his motorcycle up. None of them have any money to fix it, so it's just sitting in his shed, torn apart. He took it apart. See, that's what you do. When you don't have money to do it, you do the last gasp, which is take it apart, and then that's where you stop. So he's got a motorcycle that's taken apart in pieces, never will go back together. It's not worth a third of what it was worth before. And then, get this, somebody, one of those Neanderthals up there where he lives in that crackhead neighborhood, drained the oil out of his Kia, that blue SUV that he loves so much, he love hates, hates to love, whatever. And he, Phil went off down the road, didn't check any oil in it, and it blew up. So it ruined it, ruined the engine in it. So what's Phil do? Phil drags it back home, takes it out back, parks it somewhere, disassembles everything. It, it does everything except take the engine out of it and replace it because it has no more money, okay? He did everything free that he could do. It stops, and that's where it sits. Now we're all just, they're all just sitting there looking at it. There's no money to do anything, you know? 
Yeah. But he says, well, the engine's ready to come out. Yeah, sure it is. And that's where it will stay. So, anyway, that's kind of what's been on my mind lately. The YouTube and yards, messy yards, and Uncle Phil's broken crap and <laughs> all that. It's taken me a while on this card I've been working on because I don't go into I don't go into debt on stuff. I just buy stuff out of my disposable income that I have that I don't put in savings. And so, you know, one week I may buy a window sill, next week I may buy paint, next week I may buy something else. It's taken a while to do it, but that's just how it's gonna be, you know. Get back today I'm gonna start masking off to paint around the window channels and stuff. I've got a couple steps I have to take to deal with some rust and fill in some areas and things like that. So but we're getting there with it. I'll show you bring you up to speed on that. We just passed the welcome center. That's what this big rocket thing is. Let's see back here, where's that? trying to Alabama trying to get up some money to renovate that thing because it's looking bad but that's the Alabama Welcome Center I've been thinking about one day doing a comparison and contrast of the Alabama Welcome Center with the Tennessee Welcome Center about three miles up the road up there all right so we're getting fairly close up here and we're right here we're at it I'm gonna slow down there. I want to show you the recipient for 2020 of the Yard Beautification Award. Take it all in, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm gonna give you my perspective on that situation. When you junk a house up like that, when it wasn't previously like that, and you do that, and you do all the effort and the work to junk it up like that, and turn it into a crap hole. My position is you have mental problems. Especially when you have garbage in the yard and you're so lazy or so out of it or so mentally weird that you can't go out there and pick up any garbage. All you do is get out of this vehicle and walk inside. You're useless. And you got to remember something about this. There's people that do this stuff. You know, you've seen people do their houses like this. They do the cars like this. They pack a car out. The back seat's all full of junk and the floors. And the, uh, you know, you ever seen a car that they've got or truck that somebody's got mail, junk mail, like stacked up on the dash? That's a mental thing. That's a mental condition of some sort. I, that's, well, it's hoarding is what it is, but it's like a mental condition. Know, you're trying to basically I, I, I'm not a psychiatrist of course but I, it's something to do with the people that don't like open spaces they have a fear of it like this open dashboard they wouldn't like that they'd have to junk it up like that carport back there at that house you say it had all kinds of junk in it and that, that, that's too open it's too exposed they have to fill it up like a fortification or it's all good junk they don't want to throw it away but you know, bless his heart, my brother does that. His house, he lives in a small place, and his house is increasingly junked up with stuff to the point you can't, you have to navigate around it. You know, it's like he's trying to build himself up. I don't know what he's trying to do. He's got about 50, 60 or 60% more shit in his house than he needs to have in there. We lived there at one time, but our house, it was not junked up like that. You know, stuff everywhere, got dust over it, an inch thick. You know, my brother is a good guy, but he, he's one of these people that he, he, he only looks outward. He does not look inward at himself. The things he does. He does not want to look, he does not give any, any time to look at himself on stuff like that. You know, he, he makes fun of this town up here I live in, the name of it. Yet, you know, I've got a nice place up here and it's quiet. It's so quiet, you can hear a pin drop, and yet the place he lives in, the paradise he lives in, has got 
people doing drugs probably and making noise and dogs and cats running all over the damn place. He's constantly having to watch out for all this stuff. And, you know, he, he laughs at my truck. You know, he says, it's a beautiful truck. You need a gun rack on it. Well, guess what? My truck runs. My truck runs and drives perfectly. It's reliable. It starts every time. It's in good shape. It's well maintained. His truck doesn't even run anymore because he, he parked it, pushed it under a shed. So a very nice Dodge pickup that used to be nice. And it's no longer nice. No longer runs. No longer useful because he didn't take care of it. That's the long and the short of it. There's no other way to say it. You know, so don't, don't make fun of my stuff because my stuff's in good shape. So... Alright guys, well we're getting back into home base here and I'm going to cut this thing off. It's run about 25 minutes. That's a lot of talking and I don't normally like to listen to a lot of talking on videos, but this is for the people that do like that. If you don't like it and you didn't want to watch all of this, I certainly understand and I certainly don't blame you if you didn't want to. Looks like CSX is running another one north. Let's show this little tunnel right here. This is one of these 1930s era tunnels that are scattered along this uh, railroad line. This is a busy CSX line runs between Nashville and Birmingham. And I guess this was a thing they did to keep, to reduce the amount of grade crossings. Come on, damn it. And so they put tunnels on here, but the only problem is the tunnels are only wide enough for one car to go through at a time. Figure that one out. So. Oh, you, some of y'all going to say, you need to be patient in that car. Well, I'm not patient because that all, this happens all the time. I drive 40-something thousand miles a year, and you wouldn't believe the amount of time I've spent sitting behind people that sit at a green light and don't react to it. I don't know what they're looking at, but they're not looking at the traffic light. If they would, they would have left by now. Alright guys, good cut off. Thanks for watching. See ya.